So the day after the big event, or well, it wasn't the big event in the end, was it, in, at Westminster? But there was a mass potential, Chief Minister, that uh, it could have been a constitutional crisis, I think it was being put around in, in, in certain areas. If you want to take us through what could have happened, what did happen, and where we're going. Right, well, on Friday, at no notice whatsoever, um, the Right Honourable Andrew Mitchell and Dame Margaret Hodge moved three clauses to a bill that had no relevance in real terms. To on Friday? On Friday. So that was really late. At which time all the backbenchers etc had gone out to their constituencies uh, or to, to their home. They tend to work a certain number of days and then disappear for the weekend etc. And for this to vote to happen on the Monday afternoon. So um, when, when you looked at it, it, it was totally unworkable, uh, unconstitutional. It, it was saying that the, they were wanting the British Parliament to pass laws that the Isle of Man had to comply with. Uh, order and Council, is this what yeah, we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that, well that's what, it, what it, you know, they, they were giving us until 2020 to come up with a public register. Mm -hmm. And we've always said, if a public register becomes the international norm, and we'll work with anyone, the OECD, fact for the UK government, etc., to come up with a, a global standard for a global policy. It's not the Alamans' um, sole problem. If you, if, if you look at the number of countries, say Delaware, the state in America have, they've got 1.1 million companies. We've got 26,000. So there's a, mm -hmm. there's a massive difference there. So we've always said, yes, if it becomes a global standard, we will do a, a form of public register, but you can't just impose it a, a, at your will. But, but can they? I mean, at the end of the day, an order in council has been done in the past. I mean, the Marine Fences Bill, uh, all those back in the 60s and yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, 50 years ago, it was 1969 by yeah. the time it came through. But that was where the Isle of Man was in breach of international maritime law, Paul. We're right. not in breach of international standards at the moment. We comply with that. We, we, we more than comply with international but standards. I suppose, you know, can they do it? I mean, technically, at the end of the day, is it possible? And, and it is, isn't it? I mean, well, they, anything, anything is possible, so but they would have to prove, Paul, mm. that we are... They, they can't just legislate whenever they feel like it. They would have to prove that we are in breach of an international right. standard to have any chance of getting it through, and that's what happened 50 years ago over right. the Radio Cataline affair. It took them two years to do it. Now, we're saying... Look, if, an interna if it becomes an international standard with a public register, of course we're going to, okay. to, to do that. But we want to see how the European Union are getting on, because whilst they've said they're going to do it, with their fifth um, anti-money laundering directive, the European Union are saying they're going to have a public register. But we're already seeing Holland, we're already seeing Ireland saying we're not going to reach it by the deadline of 2020, we need more time. So we want to see what systems they come up with, because it's data protection systems for, for example that have to be implemented and then we ha we are um, share we want to share the information with, with the registers so we need to see how the European Union handle this and then if that becomes the sort of global norm then of course we, we so, will move and, and that's what I've always said, you always been saying I think between you and, and Alf Can and others it, it's going to happen it's just a question of when it's going to happen yeah. right and, and you're relaxed about that and everyone else is relaxed so why not just do it then I mean, yeah. well because it's, it's a global standard when it becomes a global standard, if you, all you're going to do is, if, if we do it now, you, you're just going, to, everyone's going to go elsewhere to do it. America's not doing it, China's not doing it. So there Australia, are people here who, New Zealand who yeah. are, aren't, aren't doing it. There are it. people here therefore doing business who don't want their business known about and will yeah, go elsewhere, no, you say. Yeah, well, this isn't a secret register, it's a private register. Now we have an agreement with the UK which we've honoured and they review it every year and the last review went swimmingly well, we'd complied with all their requests. This is when they get access? 24 hours or an mm -hmm. hour if it's for terrorism. So they already have access to the register and we, we share that. Has it been used much or is that a no, secret? No, well, I, I, I don't think it's a vast amount. Maybe looking at 20 odd cases or something in a year where they need the information. Mm. Don't quote me on that. So, you know, I think I'm sh I've seen somewhere that that was. It's not. Yeah. But what I'm saying, it's not a problem if they if they want to ask. But it's worked. I'm trying to say it's worked. It's never like it's not one of those things yeah. that's never been enacted. Well, they, they review it every year and their requests, and we've met the deadline of either 24 hours or one hour each right. time they've asked. We've never said no, we've always given them the information. Okay. And the people on that register know that their information are going to be given to law enforcement agencies or Her Majesty's tax no. of officers or customs. Now you wind and dine these two characters, and we have the pictures, you know, you mm -hmm. take them back to the airport and you had a jolly good day and you took them around the Isle of Man. Yeah. 
you didn't convince them at all, obviously. No, nothing. absolutely not. But and they the, went to Jersey and Guernsey as well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, but you left the door open. I was able. I had a meeting with them yesterday in, the, in, in um, Andrew Mitchell's office, mm. where you have a chat. You, you keep the door open. You negotiate. You, you don't just put. The so wall you saw them yesterday. Yeah, so saw them yesterday. I saw a number of people yesterday to put over the other man's position. And by going together with uh, as all three of you, the tri-state sort of thing feel to it. Was that? Um, <coughs> You know, something you had to do. I mean, to, to have a common sort of well. Well, actually, the, I I went to see them with as the only chief minister there. I'd, uh, Ian Gorse came along with me. Okay. Um, the other two chief ministers were doing uh, either press interviews for their local area, or um, dealing with other yeah. people. We we sort of split up to try and get as many people as possible. So as I say, I, I did a number of okay. key, um, but not everyone was available to speak to because they were still coming back. From their constituency, so you may well think that this was done on purpose, a bill that had very little relevance to this. When maybe two, three months down the line, there is a bill that where this, these amendments would have been logical. Yep. This had very little well, logic. It's all tied up with Brexit, so this was it's going to come back again, pretty, yeah, it will come pretty back quick. The end of the month, I would have thought. Yeah. What happens? What are you same again? Just the same well, no, logic you can apply no, or I, more I, I, well, we've meetings? Got more meetings behind the scenes. Yeah, we will be doing that this week and next week. And you know, what sort of crisis? I mean, it's a very media term, crisis. But h how important is this to you, to the government, to the other man, to the ch Channel Islands, to the Crown dependencies? Then having this hanging over us. Well. You, you know, we, we could do well do without this when we've got all the problems with Brexit that we've got to ensure that we take the island through and, and we're as well prepared as possible. So, did I want this? Absolutely not. Do we need it? Absolutely not. But it's happened. We've got to deal with it, and we've got to make sure that we cannot have the the UK government feeling that they can. Well, and, and let's be clear, it's not the UK government, it is the backbenchers of, of, of um, the UK Parliament wanting to do this. Now, some of them are doing it because they genuinely believe in it, others are doing it because they want to cause the UK government as much problem yeah. as possible right before a Brexit vote. But, it, you know, we've just got to play the hand we're dealt with. Whose decision was it to pull it then yesterday? I mean, where did it... Where did it Get yeah, yeah, well, over the weekend, obviously, we had negotiations with the UK government. We didn't ask them specifically to pull it, but we gave them our concerns that it was unconstitutional and how unhappy we were with the situation, and that we hadn't got the chance to discuss with the um, people who put their name to it because it, it was being sprung on us at virtually no mm. notice whatsoever. They didn't give us advance notice that they were going to do this. So I, I'm pleased that the UK government did pull it because it now gives us a couple of weeks to speak to the relevant people who've put their name to this and say, look, what are your views on this? We've already said we would be moving to a public register, if it's the international norm. We're waiting to see what the um, European Union do, because yeah. whilst they're saying they're going to do this, they, they've yeah. made very little progress. The overseas territories, they were told they had to do it. Have you been <coughs> keeping an eye on them? Because I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're not going to be exactly uh, yeah, looking well, forward to that. Their, their constitutional relationship with the UK's ex-colonies is totally different. From and they the can be imposed. Depends. They can have that imposed on them. And have you kept up to how they're getting well, well, on. Well, they're, they're not all ha happy, and yeah. they've negotiated with the Foreign Office, who look after them, um, an extension to 2023, and I think that sort of took some of the sting out of it for them, because they then, by then, the hope is the European Union have implemented theirs, and you're not going before anyone else. So you think so 2023 now. would be when it will likely change for everybody, do you think? Well, this motion brings it back from 2023 to 2020. Right. And that's for the overseas territories as well as the Crown dependencies. So, as I say, there's going to be some intense negotiations going on behind the scenes for the next couple of weeks. And I suppose watch this space.